Okay, single crystals. This is honestly amazing. I, I do believe that at least, if I not right now, later, you will see the magic of single crystal turbine blades. Now, what is a single crystal? Well, it's when the periodic arrangement of atoms extends without interruption throughout the entire specimen. Um, so that's when you have like this really super awesome quartz crystals. They are all nice and clear. The reason they're clear is because they don't have any cavities. They don't have any um, like fractures within them that would reflect the light. Or, you know, diamonds, you'll see those diamonds are forever. A diamond, if it's nice and clear, is usually a single crystal. Or surprisingly enough, turbine blades. They have to be a single crystal, otherwise they will die because they're in such hot environments and such um, stressful environments. Now, just as a note, when I say single crystal, I mean this. You know, maybe this is how our atoms are packed together and it's all nice and perfect. But just because it's nice and perfect in one place doesn't mean that there's going to be like perfect throughout all of it. It might be that somewhere there's an offset. Okay, we have this kind of mistake here where these two sides, they do not fit together. It's all still bonded, like these two will still hold together as well this one, but the pattern is broken. And so anytime that pattern is broken, that's a new crystal. As you might be able to guess, if the pattern is broken, they're not holding together quite as tightly. So those defects are where we have the weaknesses and metals and crystals and other things. So most engineering materials are composed of many small single crystals. So you can see right here, we got little, all these little dots right here. Those are all individual crystals. And each of these crystals is is called a grain. Right here, grain. So all these little tiny ones right here, small crystals. Right here we have very large crystals. You might be asking yourself which one is better. It really depends on what you want from your material. It is not going to be the same answer for every single situation. Now what happened here? Well this is an electron beam weld. The reason it's got such large crystals is because it heated up. And when it heated up, it caused all those crystals to begin to fuse together. It gave them mobility and they were able to move back and forth until they got into the situation they wanted. Over here, it's all gonna be all based on how it got processed. It probably got heated up at some point and then cooled or worked. And that's what caused all these small grains. Okay, anisotropy. So when the property value depends on crystallographic direction of measurement. I mentioned this before, but there are certain directions where it's really easy for an atom to bump into another atom. Normally we draw almost these big fat balls and you're like, well, they're all pretty much touching. Um, and you know, that is true in some regard. However, there are some directions which are closer than others. You can especially see that when you look at it, you know, make the balls a little bit smaller. Um, you can see that along this direction right here, along that diagonal through the center of the cube, well, that's the best for BCC iron. It's very, very easy for it to stretch along that line. It's harder for it to stretch along this line because there's a much bigger gap between the atoms. It'll be even harder for it to stretch along this line because there's even a bigger gap. So the larger the gap between the atoms, the harder it is for it to stretch or move in that direction. It's harder for it to stretch or move in that direction. Now, this is something you don't know unless you're into my you know, um, solid mechanics class, but stress is equal to E times strain. So what this says right here is the more force I apply, the more it will stretch. More force I apply, the more it will stretch. But this might also tell you is okay, okay, but let's say this is 10 right here. And my modulus last is, you know, let's put that as 10. Well, that means my stretch would be one. Okay, so 20 equals 10, well, my stretch would be two. Okay, cool. That all makes sense. Now, let's see what happens when we double our modulus elasticity. So 
So 20, 20, oh, that's gonna be one. So what you can see here is that as my module's elasticity goes up, the amount I actually stretch goes down. It's so right here along these lines. It does not want to stretch along these lines. Now, why is that? Why is that? Why does it not want to stretch along those lines? Well, the answer is because these two atoms are closer together. And the closer two atoms are, the more that force is going to be, the stronger that force is going to be. Remember how we had that kind of energy diagram? It was saying that the deeper the trough, the shorter the bond, and also the shorter the bond, the more energy it would take to break that bond. Or at the very least to stretch that bond appreciably. So it does not want to stretch along this line because they are in a very, very deep well and it takes a lot of energy to do so. That's why it's very stiff along that direction. Other directions, these are weakly bonded, these are weakly bonded, and so it's okay to stretch along those lines. Okay, isotropy. This is where properties may or may not vary with direction. Um, if you have a whole bunch of grains, this is typically what you get because they're just so varied and random. Um, then in the end, it doesn't actually matter. Like, yes, maybe there's, you know, for this one particular grain, this direction is better than this direction. But since there's so many other ones, that it's all canceled out and averaged out. So that's why polycrystals of iron, when you have a whole bunch of different crystals, well, they don't really care what direction you're going on. Now, that's only if they haven't been processed. If we were to then squish these grains, as you can see, they've now all kind of been elongated, so they're more along this direction. Well, now they've become anisotropic. The direction will matter. And so we sometimes process metals to have that happen. We process them to change the shape of the grain, change the size of the grain, um, to change its orientation, whatever, so that we get the properties we want. I think we're gonna hit on, I think, yes, it is polymorphism slash allotropy. This is when you have two or more distinct crystal structures for the same material. Titanium has alpha or beta forms. Um, iron has several different forms. And these are all based on like either being body-centered cubic or face-centered cubic. Um, you know, this is body-centered cubic right here. This is face-centered cubic and it's all based on temperature. It will change what it stabilizes. And this is also bisonic cubic. It's just going to be slightly different um, in how it's held together. So with that, we are done with this session. And we will be jumping into anisotropy, um, allotropy, all these kind of crazy things more in the future. So we do some examples um, in actually determining how these different properties are connected by learning about the different directions and planes uh, within your unit cell. So thank you for listening, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.